Well, it's going to be Fluffy Amers coming out on top in our first match here in this series up against MXS. And honestly, a twist that I don't think a lot of people saw coming. I mean, Lemon, this is the team that had the roster change headed into the mid-season cup going up against, well, the top dogs of stage number one. And to win in the fashion they did, I think is super impressive. Yeah, we were serving, but serving lies, apparently. Because remember how much we were hating this ascent? Not, not hating, but questioning it more so about Fluffy Amers then they started off what like 10 and 1 um where to be fair my my biggest worries about them was their defense getting to kick off on offense really execute those plans but really of uh, psycho what we noticed was most shopify kind of the lack of map control and and the defense just really not standing up yeah i mean uh, it really seemed like pancakes had them read uh this entire half the way he was working the map control getting those uh, stage one presence, uh, rotating, pulling the rotations from them and working the other side of the map. I mean, it was a real masterclass from the IGL here. You know, there was real no real stars stepping up. I mean, everybody in their own right was a star uh, on this map, uh, but Pancakes as the IGL really pulled them together and pointed them in the right direction. It was really magical to see. And I just, you know, I was hyping up Brock. I'm a big fan of initiators on Voice Shopify, but just there was so much B presence that was given up. We we saw little Brock today, not big Brock. And <laughs> I think that Fluffy Amber smelled the blood in the water. They were able to just flood into sight. They were taking pistols, carrying that momentum, just dominated most of the map, where all Fluffy Amers had to do was close out in the end and almost a fake comeback, I guess. But and also the Fluffy Amers duels. They they put Amers in the branding and they delivered on that. So they get to keep the name. The shooters were shooting today, that's true. Yeah. I mean, you heard it in the, in the, uh, uh, the I guess, the ad segment there where Odorous was talking about the importance on Ascent of having a good Odin player, and honestly, he just got out odin uh, You know, Brock just could not, could not step up to uh, the plate here when needed, and it, it really let them slip it away over on the B site. Ascent's truly an Odin or be Odin type of map. And uh, I think the Pancakes really kind of set the standard going on, kicking it off right away. So I'm definitely intrigued to see going on further in the series. Obviously, this Ascent coming out from Fluffy Amers looks rehearsed. It looks well-practiced. And honestly, the players just seem to really be working really, really well together. Well, we were talking about the initiators over on the MXS end, but Jen, I think there's a good opportunity to maybe, as we go on to the next screen here, talk about the initiators that we see coming up from Fluffy Amers, because Neptune is someone we don't necessarily get to talk about the most, but still great performance from everyone, but Neptune as well, I wanted to give a little a little nod to there. Yeah, and the, the role of KO, especially on a say when infiltrating A, like the XX were, were great. Fluffy Amers took almost every single round of their offense, getting into sight, brawling it out, or even in the mid rounding, just playing the mind games and really selling their fakes to, to Moist Shopify. And Moist Shopify barely, like they're undefeated. They didn't drop like any games throughout this. Yes, they have very little time on Ascent, but I wasn't expecting that big of a brain gap on, on our very first game. But at least the, the next map should be more favored towards Moy Shopify. But we really have to kind of change our entire minds on how we estimated Fluffy Aimers because these roster additions have made a world of a difference. It really, really has. They... Everyone meshed together quite quickly. And I want to go back to something that you were talking about, Psycho, and talk about pancakes and this IGL, and especially in some of this rounds. And call back to round 11 in particular, because MXS, I mean, they were trying different things out. This was a push on through mid, but they kind of just kept getting red at any turn. Yeah, I mean, Pancake's calling the early A control here while, uh, you know, they're splitting the 3-2 and, and saying, look, we know they're doing some mid control on the MXS defense side of things. We're just going to take the extremities, uh, make them guess where we're going, uh, and then run over here and hit the B side. As soon as they have the information that these guys are in mid, they say, you know what, screw it. We don't care that they're mid. We're just going to jump right past you and rush onto the B site. They obviously had to read that Brock was going to be playing off site here, uh, and they flood into the site and take it quite easily, right? And then Mame here. Oh my gosh, what a masterclass. Look at him go on the Omen. I mean, he just looks right at home, this guy. Like, Wyatt was saying, rolling back the years, stockbroker, uh, back on envy. <laughs> Look at him. Bang, bang. Headshot machine right here. This guy is absolutely cleaning up. And, you know, these new additions, not only are they adding firepower, but they're also allowing these guys like Mame to, to fall back in these comfort roles and enabling them to be the best that they can be. 
Hey, that was like um, just mummy stonks going up, the biggest <laughs> throwback to the money days. But have to see if those songs can continue to rise looking over at Fluffy Amers heading on into the series because the sun all looked pretty well done. But now we're going to be heading over to Breeze. Jen, last time when we saw the previous iteration of this team, TWT, they were bested over on Breeze by the hands of MXS. 13-9, so it wasn't the most one-sided, but I'm curious what MXS has in store for us now. Yeah, at least this could be a confidence booster for Moist Shopify. They're undefeated on Breeze, not only against Fluffy Amers, but in a, in another week as well. And this is where Moist Shopify actually struggled on this map in the past, mainly in the Sean Gares tournament, the offseason. But they once they ditched the Harbor pick and went for a Cypher, they've been good ever since. Just go to the standard stuff. And with how large of a map Breeze is, I feel like it'll be less punishing for Moist Shopify to play a deep defense because we pointed out the deep defense that they play on the send and just how much map control they gave up but I feel like on Breeze that may actually favor them so the defense on Moist Shopify should look a lot better here on TWT or Fluffy Aimers when they played this map previously they opted for pancakes on Astra which is unique over the sofa but then uh pancakes dropped 31 kills uh, and against Thinking Men and OT on Breeze. So I'm perfectly fine with Pancakes playing whatever the heck he wants as long as he does that again. Yeah, absolutely true. <laughs> I mean, the, the map difference here between Ascent and Breeze is huge. I mean, Ascent's really a, an IGL playground. You saw how Pancakes was able to work work the map control and really put these guys against the ropes. But, you know, going into uh, going into Breeze, it's a much more brawly map. Uh, we saw Mata getting activated a little bit there uh, with the op on Jet. And that's what we're really going to need to see from him. Uh, on Breeze here if, if we're going to see MXS uh, pull out this Breeze win. Uh, we need to get your jet active. You need to get the operator in his hands, and you need him to start getting these picks and man advantages so that you can close out some rounds. Yeah, and I'm sure this is going to be an MXS that is definitely not underestimating Fluffy Aimers going on forward. But with our agent select, I'm really intrigued to see where Fluffy Aimers is going to take this. Considering, Jen, the last time when we did see it was TWT, it was, was before the roster changes. So it'll be Mummy instead going on to that Astra. And Paykicks can just fall back to the Silva he literally just played. So that that's a comfort pick for sure. And the Astra returns. And we know how powerful Astra is on the post plant with the Grav Wells, the Cosmic Divide as that Giga Chad Viper wall that can lead you into the site. We know how much potential Fluffy Amers on this offense has. Uh, I'm surprised that they didn't really change up much beyond that uh, considering how Ascent they they completely flipped their strat of going from uh, a Cypher to a KJ and other things but this is still a moist Shopify standard comp where they've won this last time they've won against every team they've played this in the regular season after ditching the harbor it's been smooth sailing for moist yeah, I actually love this uh, Astra pick. It's something that we used to run back in XF back in the day with Def uh, playing the Astra and the double controller set up here. You obviously lose a lot with your Cypher uh, not being in the rotation, uh, especially with the recent changes with Breeze bringing Halls back in. That's now something that you have to actively keep eyes on. You can't just rely on that Cypher trip to, to cover that space for you, right? So it is a bit of a gamble, a bit of a trade-off, but it's something that I think will throw some spice in here and allows Fluffy Aimers to try and punch upwards against this voice Shopify by throwing out a comp that they're probably not very experienced and practiced uh, against much in scrims. Time to see if that gamble can be worth it. Up one in the series, one map away from a 2-0 upset over MXS and time to head over to Gompers and Wyatt. We got uh, a very interesting setup going on. There's a lack of Cypher, but Fluffy Aimers did manage to win it out. So I'm just expecting there to be uh, an interesting approach to what this breeze is going to look like, Wyatt. I'm definitely always a bit apprehensive when I see a good Cypher map in the current meta and don't see the Cypher. Um, for some of the reasons that I think Psycho was explaining very correctly with the halls being an active part of the map now, having to commit players to keep their eyes on it can be pretty taxing on your setup. So that is definitely going to be one thing to look for on defense, as he mentioned. Um, but Really on attack is where, at least so far, the Fluffy Aimers, previously TWT, when they were playing it in the regular season, were excelling. So yeah. going to be looking for that to be their favorite side and looking to see what they can do now with this new firepower on the team that we've already seen massively pay off on map one. Huge upset from the Fluffy Aimers. And we'll see if they can actually win the upset series. I mean, that would be insane. No one would have predicted this. I think, too, with... 
I guess more so like Jonah now taking on a, a controller role um, than what we're uh, used to looking down at. That Sentinel is going to be kind of interesting take into the dynamic of this team, though. Already strong push up coming towards B and huge information. Odashima down for that first pick and pistol round. Uh, looking like it's already slightly going in favor. Yeah, no, MXS cleaning things back up and a potential for a fight just leaning down over towards A. And now Fluffy Aimers, they've got this retake wall up and there's also a star in A main that was placed for Mame early, which is also for the purpose of retaking A because they stack towards B. They retake halls with the dart and there's going to be a long flank from Jonah towards spawn as well. He's about to have to break a trip, but retake from all angles here for the Fluffy Aimers. Oh, Jonah with the timing. Ah, oh, man. I thought for a second there, the timing maybe oh. might have just been a slightly a bit off, but MXS and Fluffy Aimers just trading picks back and forth. Already knowing where Pancakes is and is able to find it, especially with the amount of sheriffs that we've collected here. And the day is looking beautiful for MXS, just needing to make sure Jonah doesn't make the pass by, especially with the crosshold that is being held, and it looks... Is the Fluffy Aimers not in a very good position? No, just one headshot needed to take away and priorities not set in the correct spot, but let down to MXS to take that first round. Yeah, I really like how MXS played that post plant, rotating a couple players towards door late into that retake to just set up a nice angle to be able to push up and fight for the spike if it was tapped, if that was needed. And then also just, yeah. you know, for future reference, it's going to be good for... I mean, even then, it's a position where that retake wall was somewhat uh, irrelevant. So that was nicely done from them. And you can already see how that lack of trip and hulls is going to affect the defensive side. Neptune was just having to fully watch that himself, and he got picked off because of it. So eyes definitely going to be on that as we get later into the half. Brock looking for a pick and is able to find it, but I mean, even then, pistols just into the hands of Fluffy Aimers. Surprised to see. Uh, okay, I was gonna say something, but I, I feel like Mata just kind of ripped that straight out of my head, and maybe the heads of all. Oh, what is going on? What is that? that was so disrespectful. <laughs> what the hell is happening in this game? Oh my god, now he has the marshal and can actually do some pretty significant damage. With Odorous being weak in the corner. Don't you know, tell me he actually creeps up and gets this kill. <laughs> Odorous was on the angle, thank oh god. I didn't want to see that get any more chaotic than it needed to be. Dude, what? that's the only appropriate response, I feel. <laughs> Without the knife and uh, beautiful shots. I mean, I, I do got to say, though. <laughs> Listen, we'll take what we can get from Fluffy Aimers, but so far so good overall for MXS. And it was on attack on Ascent where they started to make a bit of a comeback, start to come to life, and finally a bit of momentum, finally with a lead in the game here. They're yeah, making... Not a lot of noise, though. Mata did pick up the op on the attack, which is such an interesting choice on the third round. Uh, moving forward. Never mind. It's wow. not interesting at all. It's honestly quite great, to be honest with you. That is a fantastic shot from him. The op, obviously, so dominant on this map with how wide open it is, how deep the sight lines are. Bones has worked into a nice position, though. Fly it. He knows it's possible someone is up here. You can see his crosshair is on it. So we'll see if Bones can find the timing to even things up. So, trying to find the momentum that works best for them. Fluffy Aimers looking for the noise that had been made around in mid, especially with the op. I think they're holding themselves some sort of caution. I do like this because the op kind of scares them away a bit. They don't have a lot of util, flash util, I guess I can say, to counter this. Neptune down. And now Brock kind of taking a fall of their own. And they're hiding to make sure this team does not know what to do or where to go. But even then, Odashima making Mata watch the angle just alongside to keep this working. And it works so tremendously. It's, it's absolutely no way for Fluffy Aimers to bring this back at this point. With 11 health left, yeah. 
Great swings from MXS there. With Odorous taking that first contact, and then Mata picks up the angle to shut down the player that was going to try to trade and kill Odorous tucked in that corner. Some really nice fundamentals there from MXS, and they've shown so far that they're excelling in these post plants on A, winning the bonus round now with that risky off purchase on the attack side. This is a fantastic start from them. And also just, you like to see a hotter start here from Odorous because he did really struggle on map one to get anything going. And now out the gate already with four kills. Headshots with the Guardian always get the confidence up, make you feel like you're a bit of an aim god. So, see if you can keep that up. Oh, Trump, oh like, it's it's literally 5% of the head. That's just out, and, and he just finds it. That is nasty work from the man who proved himself to be the best duelist in the league during the regular season. And that's not just an opinion by the stats. That is a fact. A lot of pressure on Mummy. He's able to get the first and slip out of there. Oh, the flank, though. What? You, this is going to work out so well for Pancakes if they time this, though. Although interesting to see where the, the, the placement of the smokes are placed. Us managed to get one, leaves it up to Pancakes to bring it back, but they can't. Even then, they did have a pickup. Maybe Bones can take this one back, but yeah, dissipation of the smoke. Nobody knows Bones is there. They feel some sense of clarity. I know Odashima is going to keep themselves watching. And the round win back to MXS. They are here for blood. Things got pretty scary there for a second as Mummy is just not cooled off whatsoever despite the slow start in terms of his individual and so on point was by far the star player of their opening series and now again was the star on ascent the first map where they got that win dangerous for sure for MXS to deal with here and the AWP has actually been tossed over to Brock, interestingly enough. So you have to imagine Mod is going to try to get deep into this site and, you know, throw down that cloud burst for himself, try and take some closer range duels. Off still in hand this time, giving over to Brock. Interesting that Mod is not really taking that approach anymore, but I'm assuming it could just be that. That entry needs to start to come through. The Decay there, though, doing a lot of damage, but not necessarily too much. Still stuck around the back. A beautiful pop flash to make sure that the... I mean, the backside isn't really doing too much damage there. Already then, not a lot of space taken up by Fluffy Aimers as they try to reconnect themselves with the site here. Mummy with a great trade back. Actually has the wall ultimate as well. Could place that, but Odorous is finding... So great timings here to get that man advantage back for the team. Oh, they're still watching with the op. Mata's back, Mata's back, baby. Here might be the time to see exactly what they can do, but it doesn't matter. Ochima is in such a perfect spot to keep this team alive. 5-0, and oh, by the way. Certainly displaying why this was the map pick that they opted for. The post plants are really fantastic from MXS. Odorous has absolutely come to life here after a sluggish map one. And Mata with that entry pick, that was off the back, you pointed it out, there was that pop flash, and it was synced up with Brock's recon back site too. So when that player was focused on breaking the recon, they just get a direct flash to the eyeballs and there's nothing they can do. Really great attack side so far. Fluffy Amers again forced onto a bad buy. Now they're trying to counter whatever Mod is putting forth. Doing the best they can with the smokes just set up to avoid any sort of early take here. But Vic manages to find two and already a pushback. They know that somebody's there. They've seen Bones work around the back and it's MXS that will not let this team survive. They tried everything they could. I, I mean, applying some of that pressure down in the pistol round. But yeah, it goes the way it goes. And now Pancakes left alive and uh, not a lot to really do. Yeah, Vic as well. Another, the the opposing controller to Mame, who has not skipped a beat either, was the top fragger for MXS on map one. It has been a controller-dominated series so far. Was getting pinched by Fluffy Aimers. They wanted to go for an aggressive play, a risk on the bad buy. 
but just simply do That's not hit there. the shots. Yeah. Vic looking so crisp today. They are not letting this team do anything. <laughs> and I guess that, that to some extent it really is uh, deserved. I, I really just wanted to come back from the loss that they faced previously. I would want to too. It was unfortunate, a huge turnout. Um, that kind of led Fluffy Amers into that advantage, so. Yeah, for sure. And it definitely feels like right now we're headed towards two very dominant map wins for either team exchanging it on their own pick. A timeout is going to be called here from Fluffy Amers. Yeah. Definitely a good time from their coach Shinobi, who's very experienced, been around Valorant since the beginning when he was a pro player on C9 all the way back in 2020 and maybe early 2021 as well. He's been a coach for several different teams since then. And right now, definitely addressing the fact that they have four ultimates heading into this round, as do MXS as well. So, you know, if MXS really want to, they could just go for an explosion into either site with their null command early, turn everything off for the fluffy aimers, all their utility shut down so they can get that plant in. And then Vic as well has his Vipers pit up. So this could be yeah. the easy one-two punch to win a round here for MXS. That's all they need. Yeah, three players already set up an A. One watching holes, making sure they have everything they need to give themselves a huge possibility into this round. But an interesting wall, uh, honestly, trying to set aside some of that decay. Maybe stop some sort of push. Not pushed up just yet, though, especially now with a Hunter Fury making its way, Mata. Was not caught. Jumping just on top of boxes to deny any sort of death there over the offset up a beautiful position as well and jonah knows they're up top now forced to play passively is jonah they know they can't peek anything on a right now which is going to put them in an awkward position terrified of that operator yeah with that wall they could push by Make a comeback with some of that space, especially a lurk set aside in mid with Otoshima. Cage triggered. Yeah, this noise being cut and now a little bit of pressure in the halls. Cage Open that door and that's going to be the trigger for the split to come in. Pressure from multiple Ooh. angles. And they've already found it. Neptune with a 3k through the smoke. Another one just left down to them. And it shouldn't have happened the way that it did, but the timing was there. And I guess that's the game of Valorant. Maybe just another one left up to fly, uh, and they're feeling confident, but a 1v4 situation. It's so much util just set aside, left down onto the site. I mean, a suppression could be made, but a flank already looking like it's going to make some way. 13 seconds left, and the spike not even there. They're going to have to recollect that, but even then, three players watching, and a huge round for Fluffy Aimers. Finally able to slow MXS down, not allow that hit to come in, but even more importantly, finally around where Fluffy Aimers actually have multiple players set up to stop the hit on, on the correct site. You know, at, at, at times it definitely seems that this lack of Cypher has hurt their ability to stack some areas of the map because they have to be pretty spread thin. They're info starved at times. And so it's allowing MXS's big sight hits to come in, you know, not as contested as they could be if, you know, they were hitting the site that was either a little bit stacked because the cipher wasn't there or the site where the cipher is there and they have to deal with all the tripwires. So it is causing some awkward situations here for the fluffy aimers yeah. committed to this attack off as Mata. And it has worked out so far. No bones, just keeping a close eye. Though I do like this. Oh, huge reposition. If Bones peeks this, it's over. Mata has the angle, but shoots the legs. 30 health left onto Bones. And their life is unscathed. And that's got to be the biggest unfortunate play that has happened for this team so far. Already losing two off of that alone. Yeah, and Vic tries to find a timing with that engagement, hopefully causing a distraction for Fluffy Aimers. But Mame eyes trained on main and gets a free kill five on three now continuing to be slowed down our mxs with a grab well gonna be tough to get in here through the smoke a good flash though when i thought mommy would have had it but flyer 
just makes oh it happen for this team MXS. They've lost Mata down early on in the round, but they figured out a way to convert this, and it might just be perfect. Odashima in a good spot to create some sort of wide swing potential there, and they find it. Some sort of damage, but they know two are there. Still gonna fight this, though. It, it, even then, no, actually, some sort of discipline, which is good. They're watching along the back. They don't know somebody's there. Timing is the name of the game, and Jonah has had it ever since the beginning of this round. And he's looking for more. One second. And it's up to Brock to use that recon dart for information, but I don't even think it's possible. Then just shut down in the end. Nothing to be done there in the 1v3. Really nicely done from Flya. A great attempt. And Odorous, you know, felt like he had to push up in that 2v3, even things up, and you can't be mad at the effort and, and the decision to do that. But when he was unable to capitalize and just forced into that awkward position where he knows he could be getting pushed from tunnels. And if he goes to check tunnels, he could be caught by a player coming through arches. It's just really tough for him at that point. But that makes sense doing what they could to attempt to recover that round. But unable to do so. And now, late into this half, round nine, Fluffy Gamers have a couple key ultimates to play with. That pit from Jonah could just completely lock down B if he chooses to use it in main. Okay, the spray down from Mame doesn't manage to find anything, but even then, oh, huge information just within the smoke, Mata, looking for space, but it's big to make sure that they have everything they need for the B site, and they've pushed past everything within a couple of seconds. And Odashima in the same spot as we've seen before, continuously time and time again. And now they've made the shot. They have not learned their lesson for Fluffy Aimers, and they might... Maybe eventually in the next round, but it's up to Bones to try to find a retake. Neptune not even there yet either, and yeah, already two pings out, and not worth it. It really all just comes down to Brock getting the tag with the drone. That is almost always the case on B. So often when the Viper puts the pit there, the Sova is going to drone through it while, you know, I, sometimes the rest of the team will have worked up elbow and try to split through tunnels. Other times they just try to brute force it through the pit like they did just then. And if the Sova gets the tag, the defenders are fried. If he doesn't get the tag, the attackers are fried. So it's, it's really a simple thing that makes all of the difference there for MXS to be able to explode into the site with another nice hit so dominant on this half right now and though fluffy aimers have shown more prowess on the attack side in the previous games earlier in the season it's beginning to be hard to imagine that they can mount a comeback here so mxs mxs excuse me have just not let up on the gas pedal at all i don't think they will either i mean it's been working so far but yeah, already a smoke to try to deny any sort of information in mid that Fluffy Aimers might want to try to find. Neptune out in the open, so now you've already punished for the first couple seconds leading into this round. I mean, Bones just kind of trying to get a rotation in, let alone, I, I mean, try to find something here from Mummy, And they do fight back. Fluffy Aimers are not out of the game just yet. They could potentially run away with this round, but they have to put a lot of that firepower into it, especially with the op now set down. Yeah, Bones picking up that angle. He knew that there was someone bricks, but Brock is able to get out of there and reposition back Pyramid. A good decision from him. Yeah, the smoke set down. Try to give Bones some space to peek out. Whirr, but it doesn't matter. Odashima in such a good spot. The lurk of the team just always finding awkward positions to put this team in pain. And speaking of pain, Pancakes now running around the back. Oh, and they've made silence. Brock does not know the timing of the turnaround, and they thought they had ended it all there. But Pancakes did not. It's MXS with another round. It's Moist Shopify who have just shown such a uh, uh, just solid understanding of how to position themselves in the post plants. They've been really dynamic with it every single time that they're on A. Based on where the defenders are, they just know where they need to rotate to. You saw Brock do it there, and it just set up such a nice crossfire for the squad. Really fantastic in those situations. Fluffy Aimers, at the very Sending least, ahead. somehow their economy has stayed kind of decent. And I mean, better than decent. They've gotten off into this. And it's actually going to be a fake into B with a null command. Monitor down immediately, though. 
They were just watching. They had it in the bag. Oh my gosh. And Mata was there, but they're so used to the aggressiveness that MXS likes to push through that it just erupted. And at this point, it's over. I mean, they've already taken out two of their very, very good players. If Odashima has good positioning, I mean, it might just be able to work out, but it seems like Neptune stuck around the back. Cannot seem to hold it. And that should be all right, though, for Fluffy Aimers. They do still have the man advantage. If Mame wants to, he could place that wall to cut off a main. They just have to deal with this pit. It's going to be difficult. They don't have a drone. They don't have a recon. Oh, but they see the positioning here, and all it takes is a spray from Fake just inside of their own Viper's pit. Chances of them being able to find anything, I mean, are slim to none, but... Maybe here, oh no, the timing is impeccable. They just walk right past, and then Bones is left up to it, down on the outside of it. The Decay making so much of the damage possible, but Mame looking for the defuse, and it doesn't matter. They have to stick it around. The time was just a bit too much, and Brock ends it all for the team. MXS just are unstoppable. Vic is in really electric form today. Back-to-back -to -back maps where he's top fragging. Yeah wins out a 2v4 it was a great recon there from brock and it just came back up to get that first and it was just a few seconds of hesitation from the fluffy aimers that then you know later when they were trying to get back in uh towards the pit in the end of that things were just really rushed really haphazard and vic took full advantage of it They're still going for a quick approach, which, I mean, I, it, it's continued to work time and time again. And it, you, you see the adaptations that Fluffy Aimers continue to try to put through now. Hunter's Fury being one of them, and they do manage to find something. But they've also cleared up the backside. They know they can push this ever so slightly with Brock now. Some of that damage being set aside. Oh, Mata going to claim one back onto Bones. And even when Fluffy Aimers have gotten First Bloods, man advantages, they haven't been able to close them out because MXS have been so good in these late rounds. Mm -hmm. Shots already made and fired. But now they know where Mata is. So, I mean, if you can work around that, they will. They're trying to catch them off guard. Pancakes, unfortunately, can't really seem to I mean, do anything about it. Jiggle Peak maybe to offset the site, but... It's up to them to figure out a way to get this defusal, especially with the show Hunter's Fury making its way back down onto site. Yeah, no possibility there. Mata closing things out, and the teamwork is exactly what makes the dream work. Now this attacking operator, really solid for Mata. And Odorous again just comes through, actually the king of tunnels. He is always in the tunnel, ready to flank, and he does it again. And he keeps catching players. Somehow, always finds the timing, always from the same location. Just gets a free one onto Pancakes. This is such a good half from MXS. At this point now, both teams on their map picks have just displayed exactly why they're their map picks. The attacking halves, you know, more than competent really solid from from both sides and it looks like this one is just all but destined we're all but a you know a few moments away from getting to that third map the decider split now Vic is in a very very rough surprise with three people holding the angle I don't think they're gonna peek though and they do have wall actually not theirs set up so this give bones uh, at least some sort of leeway to back themselves off but they continuously fighting this and maybe even pressuring and isolating somebody outside of the outskirts but fluffy aimers they've done the work they need for the pistol round and they are able to collect the spike so uh, now taking a turn for the better yeah very scrappy there but at the end of the day they do a nice job trading it out listen i'm definitely not doubting odorous at the moment by no means. He's got the ghost. He can one-tap headshot either player right now. Uh. And that's going to be Pancakes. Yeah. Closes things out with a headshot of his own. All so listen. One shot? We, yeah. I want to hear, hear your thoughts. We may be approaching the same situation as last game, where Fluffy Aimers get a few consolation fake comeback rounds until <laughs> MXS inevitably win this game. I feel like we may be heading towards that territory. I don't know. I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think 
like they have no sentinel to play with on the defense here. I think this is so heavily attacker sided. I think there's potential, but um, last time we thought that MXS lost. So <laughs> I'm just going to take a step back. And Mata picked up the Marshall on defense, which actually just farms when you're on eco on this map. Crazy that the gun is cheap as hell. It's so good here. And Mummy actually picked up the outlaw on attack, going back to the scoped weapon lifestyle that he was known for for years. And that might end up punishing Mata because he won't be able to have a goodbye next round. Going to be concerned with getting heavy armor on account of that outlaw one-shotting light armor players. And there's nobody stuck on B, but you know, I guess this was the plan all along for MXS to try to establish some sort of retake potential over there. But yeah, even then, small lurk coming around the flank with Mata having this at least sniper to make sure they can get something. Yeah, at this point, it's just all about dealing damage. Fluffy aimers, they just bought up all of the long-range weapons to try and take some duels in the future rounds against rifle players and be able to take them out with those distance headshots. Oh my just, gosh. <laughs> yeah, he just cleans up everyone. That's pretty huge, actually, because now he's only two orbs off the ultimate. So if they get him the spike, get one of the orbs early, they could have the pit for late round on their bonus which could absolutely be the catalyst for a win here. Get this fake comeback started. <laughs> With two seconds left and some, actually nothing really bought out. I, I think I'd be more concerned about the outlaw. Um, at this point, especially with the amount of damage that's willing to do, especially a dent into maybe anybody over towards B who's looking to create some sort of lurk potential. Oh, but the timing. Mummy just rotated off. Bones, though, is looking for lots of space. Leading up to Halls is able to find one, and that's beautiful. You find one just within your bonus round, and, and honestly, that could lead to many. Potential for a pickup as well. Yeah, not seeming like that's going to look too good, though, especially now as Mata looking to fight back. Pancakes, some sort of space being taken up down to the extremities. Fluffy Amers just begging to bring this round back. A nice job from Fluffy Amers swinging out into the site. Odorous again. Oh my god, he's always on the flank, but Mummy, so ready for that. Vic, he's been fantastic. Needs to clutch now. Spike down A. And the shots just don't work. Okay, Outlaw, I was rightfully, rightfully afraid of it. But two Vandals picked up in return, and uh, economy is not looking bad at all. Yeah, the Outlaw is actually goaded. And Jonah was able to get the ultimate up, didn't need to end up using it in that round. But now could have it for this one if things happen to get scrappy, despite MXS being on a low buy here, saving for the next. Or, of course, we'll just have it for that following uh, following gun round. And it didn't seem like MXS were particularly close to any ultimates, so Fluffy Gamers have a chance to continue building theirs up and try and snowball back into this game. And it was a really nicely played round from them. All that pressure from Bones on the door just kept throwing down smokes, which gave an opportunity for Pancakes, who was an A main, to get out. Both teams right now just... Been showing that the attack side is at their side, honestly. I guess more worrisome, especially about the power this team might have to, you know, with the Astra on the post plants. I think that's my main issue. There's so much post plant potential for, like, just like the 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 strategy, I guess, and and the characters they have on their team here. So. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it'll be super obnoxious for MXS to deal with when the spike is down. And not only do you have the mollies, but then you have the, you know, the shock darts as well. And the additional potential then for a stun to come down on the spike or a grab will to come down on the spike. Actually getting the diffuse off is going to be so, so obnoxious for them to deal with. Plant the spike. 
spike. The placement <laughs> of the upper trip is really getting to me, and I love it for the sake of just shutting off bones, but... Oh Listen, my the, gosh. The tripwire creativity that we've seen in 2024 <laughs> knows no bounds. I, I mean, everybody just used to place the boring, like, standard info trips, and now we just see the craziest kind of trips <laughs> in every game. The, the inspiration of Moose and many others who just have wild setups. They're so annoying to deal with. There's actually so many more kill trip setups than there used to be. In, in the current day and age. We're thinking ahead of step one. Is is, is the is the meta now, but Mata, yeah. Already taken off Mummy. Right before they were able to uh, place more than one star. So even then, uh, kind of looking to get some sort of close plant potential. Not going to happen. Jonah's just shunning everybody off on the team. And MXS, they are down. And a 6 to 10 is uh, has arisen. So <laughs> definitely looking better for Fluffy Gamer so far. Scary for a moment with that mod of flank, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we're on Breeze. Oh, you have the better guns. All right, time to just swing and take duels. <laughs> Welcome to Breeze, everybody. Just swing together and shoot them. This is the big round here, though. When we take a look after the replays at the situation with the economy, and I want to pay close attention to the ultimates here as well. It's more Shopify are close to a couple of them. Jonah has been sitting on that Viper's Pit for a while now. Mata finally picked up the AWP, had an opportunity, missed it, and now Fluffy Aimers, they're going to have to play around this, not give anything away, not peek, and then, uh, you know, in a haphazard fashion to get caught out, not, not contact things. Mata still has huge positioning here. I think they might know, especially now, you know, what might be going on over towards A, especially with the noise that was heard, but the A site still making its way, and Mata has been given away. So now they're going to have to fight more than just what the entry's looking like. And Fly just shuts that down immediately. Bones in an unfortunate position, but it's flying it down on the defense, making sure things work. And then Fluffy Aimers, they are back, baby. They made everything work in their favor and now they have so much space with the util alone and finally there's going to be that pit to lock this round up and it is just the perfect time to use it good shot from pancakes and vic relegated to the save given you take a look at their economy and their five brokies on mxs right now this was the crucial round in fact on ascent if we think back to when mxs were on their comeback on attack that they actually lost, which would have been this round to break their economy and inch so close to evening things up. Fluffy Amers here doing what MXS couldn't on the first. And now we're actually getting to a situation where you can start to believe in this comeback just a little bit. It's starting to feel like it has some legitimate legs here. There's a huge chance. Honestly, at this point, like, if I were Moist Tech Shopify, I'd be slightly worried. And, and not not to a very heavy extent, I feel like this round, uh, the last round, was actually pretty close in terms of, uh, you know, what it was looking like. For sure. And if I'm Fluffy Aimers right now, I definitely want to put an emphasis on trying to claim a couple of these alt orbs. Pancakes is close to the Hunter's Fury. Mummy is one away from the Astral Wall as well. Just try and farm those up early. Get the spike down on the right player and try to carry over some ults into the next, but it's Vic who saved that rifle to open things up. They're just moving in packs at this point for MXS. Especially, like, looking for early info outside of mid to pick something, potentially, because they're in such a bad position. Just economy-wise, they can't fathom losing this round so they're going to put everything in their power to do whatever they can to win seems like op though for mummy's going to have a pretty big punishment yeah giving him an opportunity to peek try and find the pick and you can see jonah's waiting in mid to put the viper wall up over a 
is actually not going to use it. Just trying to work their way into the site dry. Oh, and Jonah knows. Head already peeked out of the way, and they know where Odashima is as well because of the util. Just already picking everybody off one by one. Pancakes gave way. Now it seems like they can't even seem to take it back. Mame, though, with the off, making the impossible happen as an Astra. They're still having to pick off this 1v1, and Vic is not going to let it be easy. They just need one more. Whether they die or they win, they have the ultimate for the next round. Mame closes it out, though, to keep things going very, very quickly. I can't say it enough, can't mention it enough, how revitalized the Mame looks right now in the mid in the mid-season playoffs, excuse me. Time to go into the Astro what a round to win from him. Fluffy Amers took a massive risk not having that wall up on A, just trying to take fights. Maybe expected that MXS's weaponry would be uh, less strong than it actually was. They had a couple of those Guardians, that rifle that was carried over. Really, really risky from them. And Mame absolutely saves the day, keeps the hopes of this comeback alive for the team. And it's them who've now gone ahead and called this timeout at another pivotal moment for their hopes to even this game up with MXS going to be heading on to the full buy in the next. They are locked in. Right I feel like definitely you can see the stress through the screen for MXS. I mean, not not a good look. You, you started off so strong, and I feel like this kind of tugs just a bit at the confidence that you're feeling. Not to mention this, if they do manage to bring it back for Fluffy Amers, it's it's the last game, you know, to potentially give yourself um, some points to lead into, some circuit points to lead into, uh, you know, the next season. So definitely fighting hard. Absolutely. I mean, MXS, the massive favorites here, and not just this game, but the playoffs, really. They didn't lose a single game in the regular season. No one would have predicted that Fluffy Amers would have already taken a map off them here. Spike down. They've placed the smokes down to try to contest, but Fly is literally running around like a quarterback, taking everyone out, and that they will. Set aside is the bomb, but Jonah takes it back in a beautiful fashion. Although with 30 health left, I, I really don't think it's going to stay for too long unless they manage to pick a shot off Mata. No, not going to happen. Spike, Spike already set down, and it's up to Pancakes to take it back, but potential for that. Not really there. Three players left alive on the side of MXS. He's just silently slipped his way all the way through A. Gets the first on, on a weak flyer. The real trouble here is that he still has to recover the spike. But the MXS players are split up, so it's possible he could get two 1v1s. Thirty seconds left. We have set aside some of those shock darts, and I like that they did create a pushback for Mata to give them some space to take this one. But yeah, even then, keeping themselves down, set aside, and a they could take the fight. It is slightly isolated for them, but they don't even clear before they they put themselves in the limelight. So. Kind of gives it away to MXS. I choke there, yeah, Vic just biding his time back yellow. Pancakes with low time. Also just, you know, probably assuming that those two players would, would be together and, you know, yellow a, a good position to take, but a bit unexpected for him. So nicely done. Finally able to get a defensive yeah. round MXS. Yeah. But still, with the economy is so strong for Fluffy Aimers. They're not going to have an opportunity to just get a, a clean eco round win. They're going to have to claw for every single one of these. It's a full buy up for the Fluffy Aimers, stacked up towards A. Null command to play with to hit the site here. Gravity, uh, you know, or not the gravity, but rather the wall for Mame. And you can see also, small note, Odorus is actually playing off site, so the trips won't get turned off if this null command goes in. Managed to find a way to push themselves onto the site, but it's Brock that kind of clears. Oh my gosh, the flash coming out of both sides is tremendous. Dude, and that was a 50-50 fight at that point. Even then, I, I mean, Fluffy Aimer is definitely still trying to keep themselves in the game, but MXS, the choke is no longer there, and they have finally found their success. I, I mean, uh, this is exactly what they needed. Now match points set aside, and Fluffy Aimer is definitely looking to struggle.
absolutely taking advantage of that timeout, which I believe was called by Fluffy Aimers, if I remember correctly. But it's MXS who have been able to string two off the back of it, settling things down after losing six in a row. On the side that Fluffy Aimers have been prolific on this season, it's where they've gotten the majority of their breeze rounds in the few games that they did play. The comeback was looking real for a second, but looks like it's slipping away now. Yeah, the Mahdi's getting kind of aggressive, especially as that smoke is going to start to dissipate down in mid, so then they're going to have to fight that. But Vic now watching the angle. They don't have it set down, but the timing is tremendous, and they baited it right into Odashima. So this is the best that it could work out for MXS, and even then, they're not letting anybody through. The potential for a third map is large, especially now as Neptune just gets pummeled into the corner, and the hope is all gone. Pancakes... I mean, could kind of wait this one out. Team Looking eight. to fight this one down to that 1v1, Defense but the damage done win. in Brock with a Hunter's Fury closing things off for MXS to take this one down, and they literally look like nothing happened. Oh, no. Looks of relief finally set aside to them, but a big congratulations to Moist X Shopify for the dub, because well-deserved. Absolutely, yeah. We'll be heading on to map three now. Moy Shopify finally now showing up as the team that we definitely expected. Fluffy Aimers still put up a, a solid fight, but you could clearly see why that was their map pick. Again, this has just been all about attacking sides on both maps. On the first, it was Fluffy Aimers really working them as far as the calling and the mid rounds. And now on this one, for me, it was coming down to how fantastic MXS were on the post plants. They were so good in those situations of setting up good crossfires, playing off each other in a really dynamic way. Yeah, it was looking concerning for just a bit, but of course, I mean, a dominant team like this one definitely knows how to go about uh, some sort of retake in a dominant fashion. Although I do want to hear what the analyst desk has to say. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Peace. 